Good afternoon. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Please stand as we begin. One holy rosary, and also to our fellow parishioners who are tuning in to this Mass, the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. No, fifth Sunday of Easter. Let's begin in our, our Mass. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's enter these sacred mysteries by recalling our sins and asking God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord, you ascended to the Father and gave us the gift of the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, by the power of your cross, you draw all creatures to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are the king of the universe, and your dominion lasts forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God Amen. in the highest, Amen. and on earth peace, peace to, to people, people of good will. We praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace 
It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us not love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now, this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them and the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us the word of the lord thanks be to god oh
The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bore fruit. You are already pruned because of the word I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. But this is my Father, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. In reflecting on the Gospel passage, particularly in context with the other readings we have just heard, the thought that came to my mind was this. When we read a person's last will or testament, of testament, or when we are with a loved one who is about to die, there is a moment when the truth of what's in that person's heart speaks loud and clear. With the long journey of life that people go through, at the end of their life, what they have to say in love to their loved ones has power and effect. And that is the image that came to my mind with what Jesus just said to us in today's gospel passage. This was the last conversation, discourse that Jesus had with his disciples and apostles before he would be put to death. So now we know the heart of Jesus with all that's been said and done and what they experienced with the Lord for three years, this is the essence of what he wanted his disciples to take to heart. I am the vine, you are the branches. That expression is the, is the symbol, the tree, that the Jewish people have in terms of the journey of life and God's activity with them. He is now the tree. He is the branch. He is the vine. Unless we are attached to the Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot bear fruit. And what's important about bearing fruit as well is what he alluded to, not so very subtly, but in a very real way. You need to be purified. You need to be pruned. You just can't grow wildly uh, and think that you're going to bear fruit. That ain't going to happen. You need to be pruned so that you will bear much fruit. But you need to remain in me in a very intimate way. It's the same expression of that intimacy that Jesus gave to the disciples. Unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you cannot have life within you. That expression of intimacy, all that took place before Jesus was to be put to death. And that, because also Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, many people are preoccupied and energized by a certain kind of truth that doesn't bear fruit, and we see it being exercised 
in our world today, all around the world today, with division and conflict, because people are speaking up for what they feel is the truth. Like that of what we heard in the first reading today from Saul, who was speaking the truth of the integrity of who God is for the Jewish people, and these Christians are destroying that. Out of that sense of truth, apart from Jesus Christ, somehow in the name of God, he persecuted Christians and put them to death. But truth caught up with him. Truth on the road to Damascus caught up with Paul. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why, in one sense we can say, why are you persecuting the truth? And he had a conversion of heart. Now here's something else that's very important that we heard in my first reading as well, is that now he, now he knows the truth and he was proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ crucified and only in him that you have life, meaning, and purpose in life. I have discovered the truth. A conversion took place in his heart. But the Christians knew his reputation and distrusted him. It was only Barnabas that said, I believe you. I see clearly that you have experienced the truth in the person of Jesus Christ. And he stood up for him. And because Barnabas stood up for him, he was able to continue to do the work of proclaiming the kingdom of God that Paul so beautifully proclaimed in the scripture passages that we read. There's a lesson to be learned here too. We need to be attuned to the fact that everyone truly wants to know the truth. And we need to be able to see how people slowly but surely are beginning to discover the truth. And for us to be able to discern that and to, to cultivate that in their life so that we can grow and trust. So when we truly are connected to the vine of Jesus Christ, we are connected to the truth. And that truth is expressed only in one way, in love and in action. It cannot be a truth that we hold near and dear, but do not express it. If we truly are connected to the Lord Jesus Christ, the person who is the truth, the way, and the life, that we cannot but have the capacity to want to express it in the context of love. And that's what St. John is talking about in the second reading today. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. And there is where we will bear much fruit. There is where we will be able to promote unity and harmony and to be able to recognize the truth that we speak that comes from the Lord Jesus, our, our Lord and Savior. So, hearing God's word proclaimed, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us humbly offer our prayers to God the Father, the source of all love and goodness. Our response is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer, that the church may continue to make Jesus known to the world through words of hope and works of love. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That world, national, and local leaders will cooperate with one another in an effort to seek peace and prosperity for all. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That the unemployed and those struggling during this pandemic will be offered gainful employment and the assistance they need. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all military personnel, especially those mentioned in our bulletin, protect them and all emergency and medical personnel as they faithfully serve others during this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, that the knowledge of the resurrection will give them strength and hope, especially those mentioned at the beginning of Mass, the intentions in our parish intercessory prayer book, and those called into our parish prayer chain. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they soon enjoy everlasting life in paradise, especially Helen and Lucia, Ruth Fangman, Marty Fangman, Paul McCann, and Terry Blackney, who died recently, and for the people of Holy Rosary being remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For each of our own intentions, which we now remember in a moment of silence. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, the vine grower, we ask that your spirit may work in and through us so that we may bear much fruit for your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the Supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover 
has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you, for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our most beloved spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your public church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and your entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, the center of apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's each other that sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come unto my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have one announcement. Mother's, Day's, Mother's Day weekend, after each Mass, roses are being sold to help Birthright of Delaware support mothers and their babies who are in crisis. The rose amount, a single rose is for two dollars, three roses for five dollars, a dozen roses for eighteen dollars, twenty-five roses for thirty-five dollars. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.